The mammary gland is an exocrine gland and comes from the modification of other exocrine glands that produce sweat. Most of the rest is located inferior to the second and third rib. and superior to the 6th or 7th costal cartilage. Medial to the anterior axillary line. And lateral to the sternal border. In some women the breast extends in the axilla. Tail of Spence is the name of this breast extension. The surface of the breast is dominated by the nipple and the surrounding areola. Ectopic or accessory breast tissue is most commonly located in the axilla. But ectopic breast tissue may be present anywhere along the milk line. The three layers of the breast, the subcutaneous layer, the glandular layer and the retromammary layer are easily detected with ultrasound. The subcutaneous and retromammary layers are similar and consist of fat and connective tissue. The fat appears less echogenic, the ducts, glands and supporting ligaments appear more echogenic. The mammary is the functional portion of the breast Fifteen to twenty lobes are the functional portion of the breast. The lobes emanate from the nipple in a pattern resembling the spokes of a wheel. The breast contains the fifty percent of the lobes in the upper, outer, quadrant. The majority of tumors are located there. Like grapes on a vine, each lobule contains a cini that are the milk producing glands. The TDLU is composed of a small segment of terminal duct and a cluster of ductules, which are the secretory units. Stroma is the name of the supporting cells and connective tissue of the breast. These stromal elements are dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue, and fat. Cooper's ligaments are connective tissues that attach from the underside of the skin of each breast to the supporting structures inside the chest. The supporting ligaments of Cooper maintain the tone and shape of the breasts. Muscles in the breast ultrasound look less echogenic than fat, and the ribs bone. Cooper's ligaments in ultrasound are very echogenic. Between the subcutaneous fatty layer and the retromammary layer is where the mammary or glandular tissue lies. Retromammary and subcutaneous layers are similar in echogenicity and texture. Ribs are easy to recognize with breast ultrasound because the dark shadow that produces all breasts are different in ultrasound scan. Some are more dense. Some are more fibrous. Some are more fatty. 
Also, the breast changed with the age of the woman. Fibrous breasts are more common in young females. With pregnancy, breast suffers evident changes because glandular tissue proliferate. In older women, the breasts become more fatty. The internal mammary artery is the most important and is a branch of the subclavian artery. Venous drainage is mainly provided by superficial veins. It is very important to remember that most of the breast lymphatic drainage occurs through the armpit because that is the same route used by the cancer to spread in the body. 97% of lymph is removed by the axillary chain. Male breast is not as important in ultrasound as female breast. The glandular part of the mammary gland is not developed in the male because this process needs drogen, a hormone produced in the ovaries. This clinical sign is called gynecomastia. Male breast cancer is uncommon. The primary function of the breast is fluid transport. The process or production of milk is more complicated than it seems. So many anatomical structures collaborate to produce and move fluids within the mammary gland tissue of women. Between all structures of the breast, the ducts, apart from having the critical function of transporting milk, are also the source of the most dangerous and common pathologies. Milk ducts are structures similar to blood vessels because they have internal epithelium and muscular layer. Milk is produced within the acini and carried to the nipple by the ducts. The female breast is an organ highly sensitive to hormonal influences as these act on the gland in a cyclic manner. Also, during pregnancy and lactation, this happens mostly through the influence of estrogen. Also, the ducts proliferate under the influence of the same hormone. During pregnancy not only estrogenic hormone acts, also progesterone and prolactin influence mammary tissue. Prolactin is a hormone released by the pituitary gland that stimulates breast development and milk production in women. Oxytocin is a hypothalamic hormone stored in the posterior pituitary, which has uterine contracting and milk-releasing actions. Breast cancer screening is the medical screening of asymptomatic, apparently healthy women for breast cancer, in an attempt to achieve an earlier diagnosis. Screening, in medicine, is a strategy used in a population to identify an unrecognized disease in individuals without signs or symptoms. According to the American Cancer Society, breast cancer screening involves monthly breast self-examination, BSC, regular clinical breast examination, CBE, by a physician or other healthcare provider, and annual screening mammography. Mammography still remains the main weapon to diagnose breast cancer. Ultrasound plays a complementary function in distinguishing cysts from solid masses. And even MRI is expensive and remains still an experimental plane. The mammogram, despite of being invasive, remains the most important. Mammography in young women is not 
indicated for screening and ultrasound can be used. But, although ultrasound is less important than the mammogram is not only auxiliar of mammography. Ultrasound is excellent in detecting breast cysts. The MRI is not yet as widely used in the diagnosis of breast diseases, such as ultrasound and mammography, but the fact of not being invasive presents possible future benefits of this medium, if the costs were more reasonable. Pathology of the breast is complex and severe, ultrasonographers should take advantage of all the information obtainable. The interrogation of the patient, the medical history. Laboratory exams, the information contained in the reports of the mammograms, are all sources of information. Pertinent clinical information includes the patient's age, risk factors, symptoms, location, clinical impression of any breast lumps, ultrasound, in some cases, surpasses mammography, taking into account that while mammography is an invasive method, ultrasound is completely harmless, really. There are very few indications for the use of mammography in women under 20 years. Breast masses in women younger than 20 years are usually benign. The histologic spectrum of breast masses in children and adolescents is quite different from that in adults and overwhelmingly consists of benign entities is generally accepted worldwide that still ultrasound cannot replace mammography as the primary instrument of breast cancer diagnosis. Ultrasound examination of the breast is one of the areas of medical ultrasound that depends more on the skills and experience of the sonographer. Maintain breast tissue perpendicular to the ultrasound pulse direcon is the idea to get the best resolution of the machine. Bilateral ultrasound studies have indications, but are ordering in smaller quantities, than studies of a particular area of a breast. This is a general rule for all medical ultrasound. You can get these orthogonal planes within the classical form of a sagittal plane and transverse plane, or in the form of a radial plane, like the needle of the clock and a plane anti-radial that is 90 degrees of the radial plane. It may be noted that injuries to the 12 o'clock the radial plane and sagittal match, but that does not happen, or at 7, for example. Most imaging centers use scan the breast as a clock face. The hours that correspond to the quadrants of the right breast do not coincide with the hours of the quadrants of the left breast. In some diagnostic ultrasound departments are using a method to determine the location of a mass or cyst in relation to its distance from the nipple. As well the depth of the masses or breast quests can be determined by this method. This is a general rule for all medical ultrasound. This is the main advantage of ultrasound over mammography. Simple cysts are not dangerous at all, but solid mass always have the potential for malignancy. Complex cysts have a variable malignant potentiality. This is a general rule for all medical ultrasound. In my opinion, the quality of ultrasound can diagnose quite accurately between benign and malignant masses, but biopsy remains the biggest proof. Structures with regular borders are generally bunnings. The contrary happens with malignant masses.
there are the two principal characteristics of benign mass. Grow, respecting the ligaments of Cooper in a horizontal manner. That not happen with malignant masses that grow in an infiltrative manner. These two ultrasound breast pictures are malignant masses. The retraction of the nipple may be a sign that there is an infiltrative mass within the breast. Round and regular is good, contrary, irregular shape with sharp border is bad. Benign breast masses grow horizontally. Malignant breast masses grow vertically. Fibroadenoma is in the left, and breast cancer is in the right. The echogenicity of the masses are other important characteristic. The ultrasound image shows a mass with low echogenicity and irregular edges, highly suspected to be malignant. Microcalcifications, which can not always be detected by ultrasound, are indicative of high malignant potential. Contrary, enhancement is a characteristic associated with benign lesions. Acoustic shadowing augments the possibility of a cancer diagnostic. These two are general characteristics of the tumors, which apply not only to breast tumors, but all body tumors. The compressibility of a tumor is a benign feature, however the hardness of a tumor is related to malignant potential of the mass. Hard, like stones. High vascularity is indicative of malignancy. Can be seen in the two images, the correlation between the characteristics of the mass malignancy and, with the amount of vascularity of the mass obtained with Doppler color, benign lesions are the 70% of breast masses. When a palpable mass in the breast is detected, several patient factors such as age, medical and family history should also be taken into account. Fibrocystic disease and fibroadenomas are more common in young women. Cancer is more common in older women. Symptoms of breast masses include pain, a palpable mass, spontaneous or induced nipple discharge, skin dimpling, ulceration, nipple retraction, pain, tumor, and nipple discharge are usually associated with benign processes. Breast cancer can be associated with skin dimpling, ulceration and nipple retraction. Cancer masses of the breastay are generally hard, but penning lesions are soft and mobile. Benign breast conditions Breast cysts are fluid-filled sacs within your breast, which are usually not cancer. Breast cysts have changes with the menstrual cycle.
small cysts may not regress and persist for more than one cycle. Fibrocystic breast or fibrocystic breast disease is a condition of breast tissue affecting an estimated 30 to 60 percent of women and is characterized by an uncancerous breast lumps in the breast which can sometimes cause discomfort often related to the menstrual cycle more than half of women experience fibrocystic breast changes at some point in their lives in fact medical professionals have stopped using the term fibrocystic breast disease and now simply refer to fibrocystic breasts or fibrocystic breast changes it is important to remember that this condition fluctuate with the menstrual cycle the picture is a typical ultrasound image of fibrocystic condition fibroadenoma is the most common benign breast tumors There are estrogen dependent masses. Fibroadenoma is a banning condition. Fibroadenoma does not cause loss of contour of the breast unless it develops to a large size. not painful and not related with hormone changes sonographically fibroadenomas have benign characteristics with smooth rounded margins and low-level homogeneous internal echoes and may demonstrate intermediate posterior enhancement normally are hypoechoic but occasionally are hyperechoic to the fat within the breast A lipoma is a tumor of fat. Note that fibroadenolipoma is more in homogeneuses than a lipoma. Lipomas are always soft. This characteristic is easy to demonstrate with ultrasound. Sonographically, it may be difficult or impossible to detect a lipoma in a fatty breast. Lipoma often demonstrate posterior enhancement. Fat necrosis of the breast is a medical condition that can result from multiple etiologies, including infectious and neoplastic. Fat necrosis is more frequently in older women. Fat necrosis have not a characteristic ultrasound picture, but have a lot of clinical signs and symptoms. Acute mastitis is the inflammation of the mammary gland. Although it may be caused by chemical or physical agents, the causes are almost entirely infectious and mostly bacterial. Clinical signs vary with the severity of the disease, but include pain, heat and swelling, frequently as a complication of lactation. Acute mastitis do not need an ultrasound study to be diagnosed, but ultrasound is very effective determining the extension of the disease. Chronic mastitis Palpation reveals some subarealar thickening, but no dominant mass. This is the ultrasound image of a chronic periductal mastitis. Breast abscesses are complications of infectious mastitis and generally occur in young women. Breast abscesses change with majoration.
really, is not a difficult diagnosis, but ultrasound is necessary to determine the deep and extension of the lesion. It is important to remember that in this case the clinical pathologies is so obvious that the characteristic ultrasonographic image is not the primary source of diagnosis, instead ultrasound can help in the drainage the abscess, when percutaneous, color Doppler brings additional information. This was predominantly the tumor of adult women, with very few examples reported in adolescence. Patients typically present with a firm, palpable mass. These tumors are very fast growing and can increase in size in just a few weeks. A sarcoma is a cancer of the connective tissue, bone, cartilage, fat, resulting in mesoderm proliferation. This is in contrast to carcinomas, which are of epithelial origin. All forms of phyllodes tumors are regarded as having malignant potential. Phyllodes are seen in ultrasound as a hypoechoic tumor with well-defined margins and decreased through transmission. A few ultrasound images of sarcoma phyllodes tumors. Introductal papillomas grow inside breast milk ducts and can cause benign nipple discharge. Introductal papillomas are most common in middle-aged women. Often, introductal papillomas are too little to be diagnosed with ultrasound or mammography, and a ductogram can be necessary. A ductogram also called actogram, is used to view the breast ducts, malignant conditions. Breast cancer is a type of cancer originating from breast tissue, most commonly from the inner lining of milk ducts, or the lobules that supply the ducts with milk. Carcinoma in situ, CIS, is an early form of cancer. That is defined by the absence of invasion of tumor cells into the surrounding tissue, usually before penetration through the basement membrane. The terminal ductal lobular units are where the most cancer originates. As noted at the beginning of reading, most of the lobules of the breast are found in the upper outer quadrant, and that is the reason why most breast cancers appear in this region. You can see. The mammograms of a sarcoma in the left side, and one carcinoma in the right. Sarcoma is a malignant tumor originating from mesodermal tissue, such as fat, muscle, or bone. Carcinoma is an invasive malignant tumor derived from epithelial tissue that tends to metastasize to other areas of the body. Leukemia or lymphoma are systemic diseases that also can affect the breast. Breast carcinomas are generally categorized by two factors, where the cancer cells originate, ductal or lobular. Whether the cancer is prone to spreading, non-invasive or invasive, introductal carcinoma is a non-invasive condition in which abnormal cells are found in the lining of a breast duct. Lobular carcinoma is a form of tumor which primarily affects the lobules of a gland. Cancers that spread into nearby tissue are said to be invasive or infiltrating. Ductal carcinoma in situ, DCIS. Ductal carcinoma in situ, DCIS, is the presence of abnormal cells inside a milk duct in the breast. DCIS is considered the earliest form of breast cancer. DCIS is non-invasive, meaning it hasn't spread out of the milk duct to invade other parts of the breast. Fortunately when diagnosed CDSI have a 100% cure rate.
This is an ultrasound image of ADCIS. In this picture can be seen the presence of calcification and duct dilatation. Invasive ductal carcinoma, IDC, is the most common and more dangerous malignancy of the breast. Invasive ductal carcinoma is the natural evolution of a ductal carcinoma in situ. That is the reason why early diagnosis of breast cancer is the most effective way to combat this disease. Lobular carcinoma in situ results in the presence of abnormal cells in the milk-producing glands of the breasts. These cells rarely spread outside of the lobules to other parts of the breast or body. Lobular carcinoma in situ, LCIS, is technically not cancer, but because it is a marker for the development of all types of invasive and non-invasive breast cancers, LCIS is often thought of as a form of breast cancer. LCIS is not always easy to detect with mammography or ultrasound. Even the lobular carcinoma in situ can't spread, it is important to keep an eye on the condition. One in four women with this condition will develop a separate invasive breast cancer. Within the next 15 years, invasive lobular carcinoma, ILC, sometimes called infiltrating lobular carcinoma, is the second most common type of breast cancer. Invasive means that the cancer has invaded it or spread to the surrounding breast tissues. Lobular means that the cancer began in the milk producing lobules, which empty out into the ducts that carry milk to the nipple. Carcinoma refers to any cancer that begins in the skin or other tissues that cover. ILC account for 10% to 15% of all breast cancers. ILC account for 10% to 15% of all breast cancers. Breast cancers are considered multifocal when more than one tumor is identified, and they are located within the same quadrant, or ductal system, and are within 5 cm of each other, and are considered multicentric when they are located in different quadrants, and are located at least 5 cm apart. This is a final rule for all tumor findings acquired through ultrasound. Comedo carcinoma of the breast is actually a type of ductal carcinoma in situ. It is considered to be an early stage of breast cancer, and it is characterized by the presence of central necrosis, or evidence of cell death and decay. Juvenile breast carcinoma is a rare form of breast cancer that occurs in children and affects about 300,000 each year. Juvenile breast carcinoma is a relatively non-aggressive form of breast cancer that fortunately is highly curable because it only metastasizes about 15% of the time, moving slowly even when this process begins. Papillary carcinoma of the breast represents approximately 0.5% of all newly diagnosed cases of breast cancer. About 50% of papillary carcinomas occur beneath the nipple, resulting in bloody nipple discharge. Papillary carcinoma typically has a more favorable prognosis than other kinds of carcinoma. Paget disease of the breast is a rare type of cancer involving the skin of the nipple, and, usually, the darker circle of skin around it, known as the areola. Paget disease of the breast may be confused with the melanoma. Paget disease of the breast may be misdiagnosed at first because its early symptoms are similar to those caused by other conditions. Paget disease of the breast generally occurs in mature women. Scarous carcinoma of the breast is a pathological subtype of breast cancer. The classic clinical signs are a very firm nodular, frequently non-movable mass often with fixation, and flattening of overlying skin and nipple retraction. 
Medullary breast carcinoma is a rare type of breast cancer that often can be treated successfully. Medullary carcinoma doesn't grow quickly and usually doesn't spread outside the breast to the lymph nodes. For this reason, it's typically easier to treat than other types of breast cancer. Mucinous carcinoma of the breast, sometimes called colloid carcinoma, is a rare form of invasive ductal carcinoma. Tubular carcinoma of the breast is a variant of invasive ductal carcinoma that is well differentiated and characterized by an orderly tubular formation. These tumors tend to be low grade, meaning that their cells look somewhat similar to normal, healthy cells, and tend to grow slowly. Interventional breast procedures Ultrasound is an important guide to many diagnostic and interventional procedures in the breast. These include cyst aspiration, fine needle aspiration cytology, FNACE, abscess or seroma drainage, large core needle biopsy, vacuum assisted needle biopsy, ultrasound guided preoperative needle Y. Ultrasound guided cyst aspiration is a simple procedure performed by placing an ultrasound probe over the site of a breast cyst and numbing the area with local anesthesia. The breast radiologist then places a small needle directly into the cyst and withdraws fluid. Sometimes, even with ultrasound, it is not easy to know whether a lesion is a mass or cyst. Fine needle aspiration cytology. FNACE is a diagnostic procedure used to investigate superficial, just under the skin, lumps or masses. In this technique, a thin, hollow needle is inserted into the mass for sampling of cells that, after being stained, will be examined under a microscope. Ultrasound may be helpful in some drainage procedures in the mammary glands. But the vast majority of cases ultrasound is not needed in these procedures. A tiny flexible guide wire is placed in the breast through a special needle. This will help your surgeon to locate the area in question. A core needle biopsy, CNB, is much like an FNAB. A slightly larger, hollow needle is used to withdraw small cylinders, or cores, of tissue from the abnormal area in the breast. CNB is most often done in the doctor's office with local anesthesia. Sentinel node biopsy is a surgical procedure used to determine if cancer has spread beyond a primary tumor into your lymphatic system. Sentinel node biopsy is used most commonly in evaluating breast.